Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad in it. Welcome to Christian Church for All Nations. So glad that you're here for those who are in the house and also to our media church family. Thank you so much for joining us. We are excited about what the Lord is going to do in our midst. We are expecting, we are expecting a mighty move of God. And we're going to go before the Lord in prayer in just a moment. So if you're watching at home, if there's anything that you need prayer for, let us know in the comments how we can pray for you. And as the Lord is answering those prayer requests, request. Let us testify on the goodness of our God. We thank God for what he's getting ready to do. And so wherever you are, if you're able, let's stand to our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, this day that you have made, this day that we are rejoicing and we are going to be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity where we can gather together, God. Lord, we commit this service into your hands and we say, Lord, you have your way in the midst right now, God. Right now, we lift up every need, God, every situation, those who need a healing touch from you, God. Lord, right now, may they feel your healing virtue flow over them, God, from the top of their heads to the soles of their very feet, God. God, we thank you that you are welcome into this place, God. You are welcome to move, God. We move ourselves out of the way, God. You come in and you have your way, God. God, thank you for meeting us right now. God, we thank you in the advance for what you're outpouring of your Holy Spirit right now, God. God, I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles. God, I thank you for the healing that's going to come forth and the testimonies that are going to come forth, God. Have your way throughout this service, God. God, we thank you for our dynamic praise team that they are anointed and appointed to usher us in, God. So, God, we thank you for using them to bring us into that place of praise and worship, God. God, we are going to lift up your mighty and great name. God, have your way in this house today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus.
Let love explode and bring the dead to life I love so bold to see a revolution somehow The love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. And this world. Dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, growing like a lion. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. And this world I'll overcome. My God's not dead. He's surely alive, he's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, growing like a
Be 
taking a stand on our own where we're at and we can also do so corporately where we stand as believers and we stand together as one and we praise and the walls will fall as we're right now as we are we are bringing the walls down in this place where two or more are gathered He's in and in our midst, and we're about to usher in the word of God through Pastor Danielle, and that's the job of the worship team and the worshipers, and we're going to bring these walls down, and we're going to bring this church together, not just our church, but the whole body of Christ needs to really, really, really come together, amen. Now, let me solve my technical problem, there we go, and here we go. Lost our say, find their way. The sound of your great name. Open dead, feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Everything has no place at the sound.
your name high for you are holy Yahweh Adonai we lift your name high oh Lord we just thank you Lord for your saturation of your presence that's in this place God Lord we just wait we bask and we just marinate in your presence and Lord we truly we lift your name high thank you Father Thank you, Lord, for the sweet aroma of worship that's resting in this place, God, and that's reaching across the airways, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that you're saturating the atmosphere with your presence, God. God, I thank you for the refreshing, the renewing right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for whoever was dry and feeling weary and tired and burned out. But God, as they sang these songs of worship, as they called upon Yahweh, Adonai, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, the transformation that's happening in the atmosphere, God. And God, we lift our hands to receive as you pour out on us, God. Thank you, Father, Yahweh, Adonai. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen on this morning. Amen. We're going to continue in this atmosphere of worship as we get ready to worship the Lord with our temporal means. So in just a moment, for those who are in the house, I'm going to have you make your way down to the altars here. And then as you present your tithes and your offering, take time to pray over the seed that you're getting ready to sow. I and mean, we thank God that this is a continuation of worship. As we worship the Lord with our temporal means, that we're saying, Lord, we're giving this to you. We're going to sow our seed, and we're going to sow cheerfully. And if you'd like to give by way of text, you can text the word GIVE to 248 368 But for those who are in the house today, why don't you come down to make your way to these altars and present your tithes and your offerings unto the Lord. Left my fear by the side of the road. Here you speak, won't let go. Fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray. God, every reason to be here again. Father's heart that pulls me in. And all my eyes want to see is a glimpse.
Heavenly Father, it is in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we come before you today with praise and thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for who you are. Your word says you're our healer, you're our God. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray over this offering today, Father God, that it might accomplish what you would have it to do. And Father, we're going to give you the praise and glory and ask you to bless the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, thank you for joining us today, Christian Church for All Nations. At our main service, it's 11 o'clock on Sunday. We also get together on Wednesdays at 6.30 to 7.30 for another service for worship and the word. And Pastor Danielle will be speaking uh, this Wednesday. So there are a lot of reasons why we can give thanks. In fact, we're coming up to Thanksgiving, are we not? And I think that uh, there are always great things going on in the body of Christ. So I just want to preface this to say that if you've gone through this and you've been blessed and God has taken care of you, I don't want you to think that you're forgotten when I say the next thing, but I think you'll all agree it's a good thing. And we should praise God for his victories in our life. We were doing that with the team today. And I can say that after our rehearsal was not that great, but we really appreciate it. I think worship was much better for us today. But we gave thanks to God in our prayer during our rehearsal. But right now, I want to give thanks, special thanks to God for bringing two people through a very, very difficult time, two people that are precious to us. I want to give God the glory for their healing. Bob and Pat, would you please stand up so we can just glorify God and thank God that you are back. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, it was, we were very concerned, and I know a lot of people reached out and helped them during that period. And again, to anybody that's been going through and gotten healed recently, uh, my apologies, but they are two of our most beautiful leaders, and they look out for everybody. So I thank you for giving me an opportunity to uh, thank them. Also, that means that Tuesdays with Pat is back. So if you're available on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., here at Christian Church for All Nations, Tuesdays with Pat is back at 11 a.m. We'd love to have you out. It's a wonderful traditional service that you will enjoy with some loving members of our congregation. Well, thank you for that. And uh, now I'd like to introduce and thank uh, God for our wonderful pastor, Pastor Danielle. Amen. I echo Pastor Wayne. So good to see Bob and Pat in the house. Amen. They are pillars within the church, so we thank God they are young, live, and doing well. Just such a spring in their step. Amen. Amen. Like 20-year-olds bouncing around here. I need that kind of energy. We thank God for them. We're going to go right into the word on this morning. And this morning, we're going to be talking about who will stand watch. And if you have your Bibles with me, um, this morning, we're going to go through a few verses of scripture, but our foundation text is going to come from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 1. And we're going to get there in just a moment. Again, talking about who will stand watch. And the word of God reads, I will climb my watchtower and wait to see what the Lord will tell me to say and what answer he will give to my complaint. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. God, we thank you for this time, God. As we go into your word, God, I pray that you'll give us ears to hear, God, and, and understanding, Lord. So, God, we thank you for all that you've done thus far, and, Lord, that what you're going to continue to do. Thank you for revelation of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Not too long ago, you know, Bishop and I were you know, touring over in Europe, and we went to many, many cathedrals because in Europe there's like a cathedral everywhere, like every country, there's a cathedral. And when we were in Strasbourg, France, uh, one went to one of the cathedrals, and our tour guide says, well, if you want to walk up the stairs of the cathedral, you can. 352 or 53 steps. 352 or three steps. So I seen 
you know, I'm up for a challenge. You know, I'm thinking like, I wonder how many steps will be. That will hit my 10,000 steps per day. And then I seen the line. I'm like, you have this much time. So can you imagine the line would stretch all the way out here through the doors and down 12 mile. And I looked up at this cathedral and I'm looking way, way up. And I'm like, mm, I don't know about this. Because I'm thinking, because if you got to go up those stairs, guess what you got to get down? You got to get down the stairs. And I'm sure going up is harder. But the fact it was 352 or 353, but you could see all of like Strasburg from that viewpoint. And I so wanted to do it, but I'm thinking, I don't want to miss the ride back to the boat because that would not be good. But it was something that's so amazing there that you have all these different places in Europe where you can walk, go up the, the, the stairs of the cathedral and just kind of gaze out from their watchtower. And I could imagine what that view would have looked like. If I had the time, I would have definitely stepped up to the challenge of walking up all those stairs. And you know, when in Europe, wear good walking shoes. Now, the people there, the ladies may wear heels, but I'm from over here. I need some tennis shoes if I'm going to walk up 352 or 353 steps. But imagine, Habakkuk is talking about how he was going to climb up his watchtower. And so that's what we're going to be talking about just for a few moments this morning. And what we have to understand, the role of what the watchmen did. And in the Bible times, it says the watchmen in the Bible, they were guards responsible for protecting towns and military installations from surprise enemy attacks and other potential dangers. And in these ancient Israelite cities, they were often stationed, they often stationed the watchmen on high walls or in high watchtowers, kind of like the cathedrals that we've seen in Europe. And their job was to keep watch and to warn the townspeople of impending threats. So this was not some kind of cushy, cushy job. This was something that a job that had to be taken seriously. And we're going to look at the makings of a watchman because we are in, in essence called to be a watchman. It may be over different in your family. It may be over your job. But whatever it is, there are makings and markings that make up a watchman. And so what the word watchman means, it means to lean forward. It's to peer into the distance. And it means to observe, to wait for, and to keep watch. And church, I'm here to tell you there is a mandate for us to watch. And we look at what does the word watch mean? I'm not talking about watches that some people wear, but the word watch coming from the Greek word gregario, it means to be awake or to be vigilant. That means it's time out for sleeping. It's time for us to wake up and be vigilant because God has given us a mandate to be a watchman. And when we're watching something, you know, sometimes what do we do? We watch TV or we watch a movie. But this type of watching, it means responsible involvement. That means you are responsible to be involved. This is an action word that you're not just merely watching, but you're involved in the process. The kingdom of God, we are a part of the kingdom of God, and we have responsibilities and duties to be that of a watchman. So you have a responsible involvement, not just merely watching like you're watching a TV show where you start clicking through the different channels, and most of us have many channels, especially if you have cable. Now, back in the day, when I grew up, you had two, four, and seven and 50, and at a certain time, guess what happened to that TV? Bye-bye. It was not there. You got that little screen that said no more. But now you have satellites where you can click through mindless entertainment. And just like, and what do we say sometimes? There's nothing to watch on TV. You got 400 channels. You have nothing to watch. But this is a different kind of watch. So I want you to understand that we are having a mandate. We are commissioned to have responsible involvement. If you are a child of God, if you make Christ your Lord and Savior, you have been deputized to be a watchman for him. And there is a responsibility on your part to be involved in the work of God to be vigilant 
and to wake up, sleepyhead, to wake up, rise up and out of your spiritual slumber and realize of what's going on in society today. We have to got to stop turning a blind eye, a deaf ear, and saying, it's not my job, it's not my responsibility, but God has called you to be a watchman. God has given you responsibilities and duties to be vigilant, to be awake to be a part of the watchman crew. He wants all hands on deck. You know, recently I was watching a cruise documentary and it was going back to the workers on the cruise. And the night shift were on the cruise watch and they worked what's called on the bridge, which is basically they were making sure that everything on the boat was safe. Meaning that if you're on a big ocean boat, The last thing you want to do is to crash into something. So not a good idea. So they had this crew set forth in the night where they had night watches. And one of the workers was describing his job duties. He said, yes, I'm the captain of the first watch. And he says that on the bridge or on the deck that they were working at as they were in the control panel, they said it must remain pitch black. No, there's one thing when you're in a city because we have city lights. There's one thing in your country, it's dark. But there's a whole different level of darkness when you're out in the middle of the ocean. A whole level of darkness. And he said it has to remain pitch black. Have you ever been in a situation like that? I remember every cruise we go to, this last recent one, I went out to our little overlooking pass like at 2 or 3 in the morning. Pitch black. I am the person, I want the place lit up like Walmart. I like light. I like light, light, light. So I'm stepping outside, tiptoeing, looking outside, and it's nothing but darkness. And then I watch this documentary. He says that it has to remain pitch black for him to do his job. Now, mind you, they have all these computer devices They have millions of millions upon millions of dollars of equipment that's supposed to help them see and guide their ship safely on the ocean. But they said, we're not able to use this equipment because he said that there are smaller boats and smaller lights that would not be detected on the radar. And what he went on to say is that we have to use binoculars to scan so that we can see maybe a smaller vessel, so that they can see lights in the dark, you know, things that go thump in the dark. He said, this is our job. And he said, for the first four or five minutes, it's hard to adjust his eyesight too. But eventually, it becomes easier for him to do his job. It kind of reminds me of like when our seasons change, when it gets dark like at four or five o'clock, and you got to go out and drive, and the first thing we do is like, ooh, I can't see. And you start driving like this. Maybe this just is me, but I can't see in the night. But it takes my eyes time to adjust so that I can keep watch of my surroundings. And this is what he was saying. I said, wow, it makes sense. He's like, get my binoculars out. And I am on my watch place, my place that he's been set and appointed. So you have to understand is what are you using to keep watch The Lord has given us his word, the word of God, to be a source of our guide voice, to direct us, to give clarity, so that when when we are out watching out, that we are able to discern, spiritually discern as to what is happening around us. So what makes a godly watchman? Because we're going to look at some not-so-godly watchmen. But the makings of a watchman is to have active hearing and active listening, too. He said, I'm going to climb up, what, my watchtower and wait to see what the Lord will have, will tell me to say. What did he do? He went to the place and position that the Lord have placed him. He went to his watchtower. He went to his position, and the Lord is saying, you got to get in place in your position, and you get in position in your position, and you wait to hear what I'm going to download to you. It's not about running over here. I want to be in this place. No, God has set everyone each in their own individual place, and you have to make a decision. Will you climb the tower that God has 
entrusted you to steward. He's given you something to steward. We talked about this throughout this year, being stewardship of success. And you have to steward the ship that God has placed within you. you got to say, Lord, thank you for this place and this position that you put me in. And I'm going to wait to hear from you. And God, I'm going to actively listen. Not only am I going to actively listen, I'm going to actively hear what you have to say. Not just saying, I hear you, but God, I'm going to hear what you say, and I'm going to do what you call me to do. Because why? I want to be a watchman for you. And a part of being a watchman is to hear the voice of the Lord. And that means getting in a position, Lord, saying, God, I wait for you. Get the spiritual wax up out of my ear. Get rid of all the junk and all the muck out of my ear so that I can hear your voice with clarity, without confusion. Not only do we actively hear and actively listen, we actively obey. Obedience to the word of God is crucial to the watchmen. What is his word telling you to do? Well, you may say, well, Pastor Danielle, well, he, the Lord told me to do something. Well, I really didn't like what he said, and it just didn't make any sense. A lot of things are not going to make sense to your logical ear. Many of us are logical. We're analytical. We want to know this, that, and the other. The Lord's like, I didn't ask you all of that. He's asking you, are you willing to obey, which requires to trust? Are you willing to allow him to do what he needed to do to work in your life? Trust the process, knowing that obedience is better better than sacrifice. Obey what the Lord says. You say, Lord, I want to stand watch. God, thank you for putting me in position. But if you fail to obey his word, you're not doing him due diligence. He's wanting you to obey. Understand, we are accountable on how we play out our role of a watchman, that we will be held accountable for what we do or for what we don't do. I'm going to jump to another scripture in Ezekiel 33 where it talks about the watchman's duty and those who don't take heed to the voice of the Lord. And in verse Ezekiel 33 and 6, it says, but if the watchman sees the sword coming, and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. We are responsible, again, for what we do and what we don't do. It is your responsibility to obey and hear the word of the Lord. Number three, pray. We ought to, watchman has to pray. And one thing I read in my studies, it says, instead of thinking of prayer as a list of what he wants, oh, our wants, we need to see prayer as a way to ask God to speak to us. There's nothing wrong with bringing your petitions and requests to the Lord. But this goes back to that actively hearing the Lord and saying, I'm going into my prayer closet. I'm going up to my watchtower so I can keep watch and look out for any possible threats that may come my way. I'm going to a place of prayer because I'm getting in a place to cover my family in prayer. I'm going to the place, Lord, I want to hear your voice because something down the road you may hear, you may get an unction in your spirit to pray for your kid at at some odd time. That unction is from the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, in order for you to hear the voice of the Lord. You sometimes got to shut your mouth and listen to the voice of the Lord. Some of us, we just like to talk. We have a lot to say. And the Lord's like, could you just be quiet for just a minute? Maybe he doesn't talk to you that way. But sometimes he's like, Danielle, just quiet. Let me speak. Let the Lord speak to you. Receive what he says. And sometimes it may be, ouch, When he has to tell you something, it may be that ouch, but he does that because he loves you. So we hear, we obey, we pray, and we also have to warn. This is the duty of a watchman. Think about it. 
if someone is breaking into your house, are you going to open the door and roll out the red carpet and say, oh, come on in. You want to steal something? You want my car keys? No. What are you going to do? You're going to blow the trumpet. You're going to do what you need to do to protect your house. And see, the purpose of the watchmen, what did they do when they seen terror that was getting ready to have. But in biblical times, they were to sound the alarm. They were to blow the trumpet. They were to blow the shofar to let them know, you need to get some help over here because I see trouble in the distance. I see trouble down the road. And they would blow the trumpet. They were not going to let anybody try to come in and take away what the Lord has placed them with because the watchmen had to warn And in Ezekiel 33 and verse 7, it says, As for you, O son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word from my mouth and give them the warning from me. This is a responsibility. You cannot worry about what they may say to you as you give forth the warning. You are to open your mouth. He said, I, he told Ezekiel, I've set you in place. In church, he has set you in place. And when the warning from cause, just like you hear the sirens of a tornado, what are you going to do when those tornado sounds happen? What are you supposed to do? You are supposed to take cover when the warnings go off on your news. When your phone starts jumping up, it's letting you know of an impending threat. It's time for you to take cover and to take action. And that is what we are called to do. It's time, church, to wake up, wake up, wake up. And hear the voice of the Lord. And also when Isaiah talks about those false watchmen, like sheaves and wolves' clothing, those shady ones. And in Isaiah 56, verses 10 through 12, it reads, For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, this is how they're referred to, blind and ignorant. They are like silent watchdogs that give no warning when danger comes. We just read about that similarity in Ezekiel about the ones who did not warn. They love to lie around sleeping and dreaming. And like greedy dogs, they're never satisfied. They are ignorant shepherds all following their own path and intent on personal gain. See, it can't be about you because these false ones were doing their own thing walking their own path. They were intent on making themselves famous. And it goes on to say in the latter part of that scripture in Isaiah, come, they say, let's get some wine. Let's party up in here. Let's go clubbing. Let's do our thing. Let's all get drunk. Then tomorrow it says, we'll do it again and have even a bigger party. This is not what we are called to do. And there was a warning for the watchmen like this who were trying to make their own path trying to do their own thing, that is not the way of a godly watchman. We are put in place and position to watch. Place and position to watch your family over that which the Lord has entrusted you with. What we have to realize is that in 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, it says, be sober-minded and alert. Why are we being sober-minded and alert? Because if the role of the watchman, because the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion. And what is he doing? He's seeking somewhere to devour. But you are a watchman that's put in place. So as he seeks around looking, you are being already, you're already sober. You're already alert. Because when he comes in, when you see the threat that's coming, when you see danger, what are you doing? You're going to resist him. You're standing firm in the faith. You're not going to be shaken. You're not going to be moved. 
because already you have prepared yourself for such a place like this. When the devil tries to come and say, I'm going to kill your children. I'm going to take them out. You're not going to listen to his lies. You're not going to listen to his tactics. What are you going to do? I'm standing firm. I'm resisting the lies. I'm on my watch. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to knock on my door. You're trying to get into my house, but I'm not going to receive what you're saying. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on what the word says, and I am going to keep watch. Keep watch, because what does the watchman do? You're looking in. You're preparing when things go with your binoculars. You're already prepared. Things in the night, looking in the distance. And when the threat comes, when something is amiss, already you're standing firm. You're standing firm in the Lord and saying, it's not going to happen on my watch. I see it on the radar. I'm seeing with new set of eyes. Lord, I'm not looking with tunnel vision, but God, I'm scanning the atmosphere. God, I'm seeking after you. God, let what things happen that we pray and something is happening in the spiritual realms. You may not see it, but there's something that's happening in the spiritual realm that when they try to come in, the enemy's going to try to come in. And there's going to be a halt because right then you're going to say, "Uh uh-uh, devil, I'm not taking your stuff. I'm not taking your stuff. I want to read to you a story as we get ready to close. And the story goes, the young watchman stood silently at his post on the wall. The cool Judean night caused an involuntary shiver. It had been a quiet evening. A few latecomers were allowed through the pedestrian gate, but nothing else. It was almost time for this watchman's shift to end. When his eyes caught a glimpse of something glory, glory over the nearest hill to the north, and peering into the darkness, confirmed that something was amiss not too far from the city. It could have been a movement of the enemy's troops with their torches betraying their position. Of course, it could just been a campfire of travelers, but why now in the middle of the night? Whatever it was, the young man's watchman's orders were clear. He was to sound the alarm. Raising the trumpet to his lips, he sounded three short blasts that would bring his superiors to his position. And within minutes, that quiet centenary post was filled with soldiers. And an armed scouting party was sent to that general area of the fire. The glow from behind the hill died down, and soon the soldiers returned. A shepherd's hut had caught fire when a gust of wind blown across the sleeping shepherd's coal and ignited ignited the thatch. The fire was not a danger to the city. The watchman was commended by his commanding officer for his his sharp eyes. It could have easily been a threat that would have been stopped by the watchful eyes of this young man. This was the very reason why watchmen were in place. Notice he gave three blasts from the trumpet and then he had people come to help protect him. How much our fellow father does that and so much more for us. We may not have a trumpet to blast, but we call on his name, Jesus. Jesus. And then he comes in like a flood. When they come try to camp around us, we call upon his great name. There's so much revelation. He stood his post and he's seen something to miss. He didn't say, oh, it's nothing. But he did what he was commanded to do. He sound the alarm to warn others. That is our responsibility, church. That is our duty. 
So I ask you today, who will climb their tower? Who will stand and who will watch? One final verse of scripture. And what I say to you, I say to everyone, keep watch. Keep watch and pray. We don't know when our Lord's coming, but he's coming. He is our soon coming king. And as we stand watch in our posts, we alert and we let others know that Jesus is coming back soon and that they need to come to him. We pray that they will have that revelation to know him, to serve him, and to become a watchman for him. Let us stand to our feet as we get ready to close out in prayer. The altars are open if you need prayer. We're here to pray for you. And again, if you're watching online, if you need prayer for anything, let us know how we can pray for you. And as we get ready to close out in prayer, just remembering what we do as a watchman. We peer into the distance. We observe. We keep watch. We pray. We ask the Lord for discernment. When the Lord wakes you up in the middle of the night, it's not just to wake you up just because just he thinks it's funny to wake you up. There is a reason because he's calling you to watch and pray. Don't be like the disciples when he said, well, can't you not just keep watch for even an hour? Could you not just pray for an hour? The call and mandate is for us to watch, pray, and be vigilant, responsible, involved, watching. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, God. God, we thank you for this mandate. We don't take this mandate lightly. God, we will be a watchman for you. Lord, we thank you for setting us in place and position, God. God, we thank you for what you have entrusted us with, God, that we shall watch responsibly, Lord God, that we're leaning in and we're looking, Lord God, and we're sniffing out the threat of the enemy. And when the enemy tries to come in, Lord, we're putting a stop saying, saying, stop right now, not today, devil. But we're standing firm in faith in you, God. We will not be shaken, God. So, God, we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. God, we thank you for the move of God that's transpiring in this house, God. God, we thank you that you're taking us to another level in you. God, we thank you for what you're doing, pouring out your spirit. Lord, once again, we lift up those who are needing a touch from you, a touch in their body, God. Lord God, that right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their very feet, that whatever the diagnosis may be, whatever the issue may be, it's being eradicated right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for healing virtue that's falling. God, I thank you in advance for the testimonies that shall come forth. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's spend some time worshiping and praising the Lord before we leave on this afternoon. Again, the altars are open if you need prayer. God bless you. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power.
Thank you, Father God, for the word today. Thank you, Lord, for a place of safety and security, Lord, where we can just concentrate on your word, Lord, and enjoy your presence as we gather together. Help us to take this, Lord. Take what you've given us. Not hide it, Lord, but get it out there. Invest it in people, Lord. Invest it in our communities, Lord, and the people around us. So when it comes time, we can show you, Lord, that yes, we're not just going to give you the one talent back. We're going to give you an increase, Lord, based on what you've given us. We thank you and praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week in Jesus. God bless you as you go. The same power. Thank you. 